do your ferns all look like this, but you want them to look like this? Well, stay tuned. We're going to help you out. Growing joy. Hello, plant friends. My name's Maria. I'm your new best plant friend, and I'm here to care for these beautiful ferns successfully and grow joy in your life while doing so. I'm so excited to be making this video in partnership with Proven Winners Leaf Joy because the fern family is so amazing. I mean, talk about lush foliage that you want to just like run your fingers over. But man, is it a bummer when you get a fern at a store, you bring it home because you think it's going to be look really beautiful. And then a month in and it looks like this, right? A lot of people struggle with ferns and I totally get it because they need high humidity. They need a specific environment. But once you dial it in, they're actually not that hard to care for. And there are varieties that are a lot easier to care for, right? If you bring a maiden hair fern home, you're not going to be happy. But there's a wild world of ferns out there beyond the maiden hair fern that are going to be much better choices for you. So let's dive in. Now, I'm going to get this ugly fern out of the frame for the rest of this video, but stay tuned until the end. We're going to do a little fern resuscitation, so stay tuned till the end. But for now, my friend, we're going to get rid of you because you're kind of... You're not the vibe for this video. Okay, let's talk about ferns. I want to zoom out and think about these plants and where they live outdoors. And then we're going to chunk it down and figure out how to build our environment to be supportive for them. So cool thing about ferns is they're one of the original plants on the earth. They are one of the original colonizers of the land, one of the first plants to grow and develop. So even though they're hard to keep indoors, they're actually surprisingly resilient. They're dinosaurs. They've been around since prehistoric times. When the dinosaurs were living, they were hanging out with ferns. I think that's pretty cool. And I think, you know, a lot of times with the indoor jungle, we think, you know, indoor jungle, monstera, indoor jungle, you know, philodendron, but indoor dinosaurs, ferns, pretty cool. And because of that, they're super resilient. So even though they are kind of hard to care for indoors, they've adapted over time. So there are ferns that do well in totally different environments, which I think is fascinating. They've adapted so much. They've adapted all over the world to endure different climates. Another interesting thing about ferns that I think is cool that's very unlike most of our other tropical houseplants, they reproduce differently. So they reproduce with spores. So if you have a fern, and this is actually an issue that a lot of people deal with, they'll think a spore is a fungal disease and they'll try and treat the plant for like a disease or a pest outbreak, but it's actually the fern's reproductive system. So usually spores show up as dark brown dots on the undersides of the leaves, or they'll even look like little lines. So just know that that's actually the way that the ferns reproduce they kind of the spore sacs kind of explode and travel in the air and then germinate elsewhere. You can potentially make a fern out of a spore, but it's next level. We're not going to cover that in this video. But just know that just is a sign that your fern's really happy and ready to throw off some babies. So ferns live in a variety of different climates, but mostly they're in high humidity environments. So I'll always remember I was doing this hike in Seattle. We went up the mountain and as we went up farther and farther up, it got more and more humid. And there were just maiden hair ferns like popping out of rocks on the side of the mountain. It's kind of infuriating, but they love high humidity environments. They grow on the ground, mostly in clumps. So they also like kind of a nutrient dense soil and they like moisture. They like a moist soil and they like moisture in the air. That is going to be the key to having happy ferns. So with that knowledge, let's dive into care. So first off, when it comes to watering, you your ferns are going to be happiest with evenly wet soil. Ferns are not a plant that you can let dry out. When you let the plant dry out, that's the minute that the fern is going to turn crispy. Its leaves are going to fall over. They're going to brown. They're going to fall off. You're going to get a lot of those brown fronds like in the, in the resuscitation plant that you saw. So you're going to want to keep evenly moist soil. And the way that you can do that is putting your plants in plastic pots. So if you buy a fern, keep your plant in the plastic plastic nursery pot and then slip it into an outer pot, right? So just slip this fern into another pot or pot them in glazed pots, right? Glazed pots that are sealed will help keep the moisture in the soil. I would never put a fern in a terracotta pot. If you're going to water your fern every day, if you're a mindful plant parent, you're welcome to take the plant parent personality test on my website to find out what plant parent personality you are. One of the personalities is a mindful plant parent, someone who wants to engage with their plants on a daily basis, then yes, you can put your fern in a terracotta pot if you're going to water it like every day and be 
a helicopter plant parent, but I would not advise that for the average, the average beginner plant parent who's trying to do ferns. The beautiful thing about ferns is when it comes to light, they are low light tolerant. They live on the understory right of the jungle in homes with indoor plants. I feel like it's always a fight for the bright light, right? You're always trying to crowd your plants up close to your windows. But with ferns, the beauty is you can put them a little bit farther back from the window. They are low light tolerant. Do not put your fern in a bathroom with no window. A lot of people do that because they're high humidity loving plants. So they think, oh, my bathroom is humid. Let me put my fern in there. It still needs a window. No light equals dead plant because light is required for photosynthesis, which is how your plant makes food. Put it in a humid environment, but if you're going to put it in your bathroom, make sure your bathroom has a window. But yeah, they're low light tolerant. So you can put them, you know, bright indirect light, gentle, bright indirect light. You can put them in an eastern facing window with gentle morning sun, but the ferns will scorch if you put them in western, you know, really strong or a southern facing window. So if you have western or southern facing windows, just put them like a foot away from that. Obviously, lighting is totally personal to what your home is like, what season you're in, if you have trees outside, if you're in shade. If indoor light is a struggle for you, you're welcome to download my free indoor lighting workshop. It takes you through three days of measuring the light so you can really have a great grasp of what light you're working with so you can pick the appropriate ferns. But the lucky part is ferns are low light tolerant. So now let's talk about humidity. The trick with ferns is humidity. If you want your fern fronds to say beautiful and green, humidity is where you're going to start to see that crisping up, right? So if you can put your ferns near a humidifier, that's great. I've done something for the set of this video where I've grouped a lot of plants together. That sometimes will also increase the humidity a little bit. You need a bunch of plants together. This isn't going to work with just two plants, but via their transpiration, that will kind of increase humidity. You can also grow your ferns under glass. I have found tremendous success with this. So I live in the woods in Northern New York. Sometimes in the winter, it gets as low as 20% humidity in my home. So the only way that I'm really able to keep ferns is sticking them under a glass cloche or in like a big vase. And that's going to increase the humidity for that plant and help the fern thrive. Particularly with heart-shaped ferns, the heart leaf fern, I've only been able to be successful that with that plant when I've grown under glass. So if you have a terrarium or a vivarium or a beautiful glass cloche that you bought, you know, there are always glass cloches at thrift stores and estate sales. Hot tip, if you don't want to spend the $60 for one online, uh, you can usually grab one at a thrift store for like 5 or $6. But you really do need to raise the humidity Ferns are going to like between 60 and 80% humidity. I know that's a hard number to get to in your house naturally. So usually you're going to need a humidifier, grouping the plants together. Because ferns are higher maintenance, I don't want to say they're high maintenance, but because they need a particular environment, because they need evenly moist soil because they don't like to dry out because you want to keep your eyes on them for crisping. I would definitely keep them away from radiators. I would also keep them in highly trafficked areas in your home. So this isn't a plant you want to like put high on a bookshelf in a room that you don't really go into and just trust that it's going to do well. This is a plant you want to keep in your kitchen, in your living room, in your bedroom, an area that you're going to be going in every day so you can see if there's an underwatering, you can catch it really quickly or you can, you know, address problems that come up. But if you follow the steps in this video, you're not going to have any problems, so we'll be okay. When it comes to fertilizing, I always like to say, don't wait for spring or summer to fertilize your houseplants because they're not necessarily going through the same seasons because they're indoors. So fertilize when you see new growth. One of my favorite aspects of having ferns is the new growth, right? The way a fern frond unfurls is poetry to me. It's so beautiful. These bird's nest ferns right here, this way that you see this fern just tenderly, gently, patiently, just like it shows up in this curly cue and then it just slowly opens up and then just basks in the sun. I just think it's so beautiful. It's a metaphor for life. It's a beautiful thing to witness. And it's one of the main reasons why I think you should have ferns because you don't see this shape in a lot of other tropical houseplants. A lot of other tropical houseplants unfurl this way, but the ferns unfill this way. And I just think it's really cool. And with grooming your ferns, you're going to have to groom them, right? You're going to have the occasional fern frond, but ferns are really resilient. I can't tell you, I had a Boston fern for many years. It would go through periods where I would just neglect it. It would like be so so crispy. I would cut that thing down to the studs. And as long as you water it, as long as the roots are healthy, that fern will come back. Ferns are so resilient. They've been around way longer than us and they're going to be around 
way longer after we're gone, right? So don't be afraid to, you know, cut off brown stems. That's what we're going to do in a little bit. If your fern does go through some shock, cut it back. Don't just toss it because it's going to come back bigger and bushier. Troubleshooting things with ferns is obviously going to be all of the <laughs> all of the issues going on with this plant. Yellowing leaves, brown leaves, balding, right? Um it's usually going to be with the yellowing and the brown leaves, it's going to be a water issue. It's going to be a water quality issue. So depending on where you live, you might need to water with distilled water. It might be a humidity issue. If you have uniform browning, it's going to be a humidity issue. This fern, I don't think has the humidity issue because all of the fronds are in browning. This was a watering issue where some of them yellowed and browned and, and fell off. Also, it can be a nutrition issue. So if all of your fronds are getting really yellow um, or the plant is looking pretty sickly, it might just be time for you to fertilize. So all ferns aren't created equal when it comes to houseplants. And I wanted to walk you through a bunch of different types of ferns that are great choices if you do want to bring a fern home, right? I am never going to advise a plant parent, especially if they're a beginner fern plant parent, to bring home a maiden hair fern. That is like the super Jedi level plant parent type of plant, right? You got to really know your, your plant care for that. But there are some amazing varieties that I have for you today that I wanted to talk about that are way hardier, better options. And with that, as we dive into the different species, I just wanted to take a minute to thank today's sponsor of the video, Proven Winners Leaf Joy. These gorgeous houseplants are from Proven Winners Leaf Joy. They are growing the highest quality level of houseplants on the market that I have seen. The people who are running Proven Winners Leaf Joy care so much about empowering their plant parents to have really high quality plants that they take home, right? Because if you're taking a plant home, it's good. If you're trying harder plants, it's really important to get really good quality plants. So you start with the best chance, right? You don't want to bring home a plant that hasn't been grown well, is already kind of on the outs and try and have that plant thrive in your home. They have great fern varieties. I also really love that they take time to educate their consumer. They have these amazing plant tags. They have, you know, the photo, the Latin name of the plant and all sorts of care information. And obviously they're paying to sponsor this video so you can have the free fern care that you need to have your plants thrive. So thanks Proven Winners Leaf Joy. So with that, let's talk about a bunch of different varieties of ferns. So I personally think the hardiest more resilient fern that I personally have had the most success with growing is the bird's nest fern. You'll notice when you feel a bird's nest fern, the leaves are a little bit thicker. I believe it's a little bit more succulent and I've had the most success growing these gorgeous bird's nest ferns indoors. So this is what a bird's nest fern, a general bird's nest fern looks like. It has one crown that the leaves unfurl from the center. It kind of looks like a bird's nest, right? It's really beautiful. Don't water from the top, water under. But what I love about Proven Winners Leaf Joy is they have this variety called the Hurricane. I think it's called Hurricane because all of the fronds kind of curl in this really cool way. But it's a really nice, compact, bushy plant. You can feel the leaves. They're like tougher. They're thicker. I know that this plant is going to be a little bit more drought resilient. Not that I would ever say let this thing dry out. And it just seems really happy. You see, there's a ton of little baby fronds on the inside. I'm so excited to see them unfurl. Um, but there are so many different varieties of bird's nest fern. So you'll know it's a bird's nest fern if you have the little crown like this. This is also a wackadoo variety I thought was really fun. It's a bird's nest, but the leaves kind of look like parsley or lettuce. I think that's kind of fun. Um, but I love every single one of them. And I would say if you're a beginner plant parent, you're going to want to maybe try starting with a bird's nest fern. Another variety is the staghorn fern. This leaf joy variety is called sword dance. There are a couple of interesting things about the staghorn fern. They're, it's nicknamed the staghorn fern because its leaves kind of look like antlers. And it's really popular to mount these on like a wooden plank and hang them. So they're sometimes called the vegan antler. Like if you like that look of like a mounted deer head, but you don't want to have a dead animal's skull in your house, you can mount a staghorn fern and kind of have that same look. Staghorn, that's why antlers. They also have these shields that kind of protect the plant that is very unique to ferns that I think is really cool. These are going to be happier in chunkier mix because they're epiphytes. They grow on trees. That's why they love being mounted onto wood planks. But I think they're so cool and interesting. And I was thinking that I might mount this on a wooden board and hang it in my husband's office for him. Okay. 
So my second favorite plant after the bird's nest fern, even though I like you too, stackhorn fern, but you're not my favorite, is the rabbit's foot fern. And let me tell you multiple reasons why. This is the Devana variety from Leaf Joy. There's a couple of different types. Rab- it's nicknamed the rabbit's foot fern because it has fuzzy rhizomes that creep on top of the soil and they look like little rabbit's feet sitting on the soil. It's so weird. It's really creepy and freaky and I think it's really fun. The rabbit's feet will sometimes even grow over the pot. I also love this particular variety because the leaves have this blue green tint to them. Not only do they have a really beautiful structure, but I just think the color like amidst the sea of green gives this like really interesting blue pop that also to me kind of makes it feel a little bit more prehistoric. I also love that it's the skinniest stem with the longest leaf. Like it's just so beautiful and happy. Definitely don't let this dry out. You're going to want to keep this in moist soil. I grew this once with a watering spike in it. Um, You can, it's a watering spike. Actually, I have one. Let me get it. Watering spike is a great hack for ferns because you need to keep the soil moist, right? So I fill this cutie little mushroom in the hole in the top. It has a terracotta porous cone at the bottom. This stays filled with water and then the cone releases water into the soil very slowly. So I've had this fern before where I've put a watering spike. This is obviously a little bit too big. This is just a demo. This is a little too big for this pot, but you can get a watering spike that's the appropriate size, put it in here, and that will help keep the soil evenly moist. I use these all the time on my ferns and my calathea. So that's the Devana. Any rabbit's foot fern I think is really beautiful. This is also a rabbit's foot fern. It's so lacy. I mean, those fronds look so delicate. The other cool thing with ferns is they are made up of fractals, which are geometric shapes that create when humans, there have been studies when we look at ferns and these fractal shapes that you find naturally in a lot of ferns, it increases alpha brain waves, which is like the feel good brain waves. So you feel good looking at ferns. So you should look at them more. Another, you know, family of ferns that I think is so amazing is the Boston fern. You have Boston ferns, you have lemon button ferns. The lemon button ferns have like tiny little circles. They look like little buttons that are super cute. Boston fern is probably going to be like the most traditional fern that that you see. I don't know if you guys watch Will and Grace, but Will and Grace in their apartment always had the most epic Boston fern in the middle of their New York City living room. They never missed it. And I was just like, how does that fern look so good? Do you ever watch TV? Do you ever watch TV shows and you're just like, there's no way that plant would be thriving in this environment? That's just something I've seen. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Do you notice all the plants in a TV show? I do. Last but not least, we have this fern mother, (laughs) which I freaking love the name of this plant. It's called fern mother because it grows little babies on its leaves. Sadly, we don't have any babies to show you on this plant because it's a little too juvenile. But I think that's really cool. This is like your bushy basic fern. The leaves feel a little bit more succulent to me. So I think this would be another great option to try indoors. I've talked a lot of about the maiden hair fern and I'm doing it for a reason. As your plant friend, I'm never going to recommend you bring a maiden hair fern home. I've killed too many. I have too many friends who have killed too many. The maiden hair fern is a type of house plant where you bring it home and you try and you kill it and then you label yourself a plant killer forever. And it's not your fault. They're not designed to be in non-humid environments, right? So if you do do the maiden hair fern, I intentionally do not have one with me because I didn't even want to, you know, give it space on the table because I wouldn't recommend it for beginner plant parents. But if you do, make sure that soil is more moist and a scent. You're, you're, make sure you grow it under glass, honest, honestly, or if you're in a room with a humidifier. Or maybe you're just lucky and you live somewhere like Seattle or Florida where it's 80% humidity all day. But sadly, I'm not that lucky. Okay, last but not least, I just wanted to show you, if you have a moment where a fern, you, is in a, you need a resuscitation moment with a fern, I just wanted to show you how I'm going to bring this thing back to life. This almost looks like it's not worthy of saving, but it totally is. I'm just going to go in and remove all of the dead fronds. It's going to make the plant look kind of bad for a little bit, but you just got to trust the process. It'll grow back. What if I just cut my finger off in the middle of this? Okay. So I have trimmed most of the brown fronds. I'll also probably take this out of the pot and repot the plant. I'll either pot it up if it needs a larger pot. Um, You can watch our video on repotting and potting up, or I'll just give it some fresh soil because I'm seeing a lot of yellow and I'm wondering if there's maybe a bit of a nutrient deficiency here, but it's all about just troubleshooting. And if you see, there's quite the bald spot 
over here. We had to cut off most of this plant, but this is going to grow back. Like give this plant a couple weeks and this bald spot is going to fill it in. So this is my fern care tutorial. I hope it's made ferns less scary. I think ferns are pretty scary for people. If you love ferns, let us know what your fern care tips are. If you hate ferns, let us know how much you hate them. Put your hate stories in the comment or put your put your love stories in the comments about ferns. Um, maybe if you troubleshoot, you know, if you put a bad story about a fern, I can troubleshoot with you in the comments a little bit and try and figure out what happened. But I hope this was helpful. Ferns really can be a beautiful plant and the bushy, a, a very different texture in, in your plant collection. Like, subscribe, do all the things that the YouTube algorithm gods need you to do in order to show them that this video was helpful. Thank you again to our partner, Proven Winners Leaf Joy. Make sure that when you're shopping for the Proven Winners Leaf Joy plants, you look for this tag. This tag will be sticking out of the pot like this. And that's how you know it's Proven Winners Leaf Joy. So look for the tag. Thanks for partnering on this video and creating this educational resource for everyone. And until next time, I hope you keep growing joy.